Good morning and welcome to the MPW webinar series. So today's engineering masterclass will be delivered by our MPW London principal, Mr John Southworth. Um, so as usual, please could I ask that you do keep your mics on mute throughout the session. You will have the opportunity to ask John um, or myself any questions that you have at the end of the session, and you'll see that there is a chat box there for you as well. So I will pass over to John. Thank you, John. Thank you, Betty, very much indeed. Um, a very good morning to all of you, um, and it is my pleasure to be able to uh, take you through um, this uh, masterclass on engineering. So first of all, welcome to MPW. Um, so MPW London uh, is the biggest of the three MPW London colleges based in South Kensington. Um, beautiful area, uh, beautiful college, and I hope so, some of you may well even consider uh, joining us in the future. So a little bit about me. Um, so I've been the principal of MPW now for um, uh, coming up for five years. Uh, before then I was the principal of uh, another uh, big London college and then before then I was uh, 10 years at the Perth School in Cambridge uh, where I taught uh, design technology systems and control so that's electronics and mechanics uh, all aspects of engineering uh, and every year the majority of my students went on to read degrees in engineering uh, and previous to that, I was in the army for 20 years, so I have a slightly different background to uh, most people coming into teaching profession, uh, where I've got uh, uh, sort of coming into my second career. But I, I use a lot of my engineering experience whilst in the in the army for a mo for a time of my military career. I was also working in the Ministry of Defence in London uh, on a sort of a sort of fairly secret uh, and high profile. Uh, electronic and, and engineering projects. So uh, before then I got my degree in engineering uh, and I've also got a master's uh, in electronics and guided weapons. So that's a little bit about sort of my, my background uh, uh, before we move on. So what is engineering? Well, there's a whole range of uh, descriptions uh, about what engineering is. But in short, it is the practical application of maths, science and technology to design and create machines, process and structures. Um, so that, that's pretty generic. Uh, but I think the, the key thing is those things, which is it is the application of maths and science uh, and that word technology, which comes into it. Um, everything around you has got technology involved in it. So that's why it's so important. But I said it's so much more. Um, so it's uh, the University of Bath, for example, on their website uh, describes it uh, in these following sentences. Engineering is a discipline dedicated to problem solving. Uh, our built environment and infrastructure, the devices we use to communicate, the process that manufacture our medicines have all been designed, assembled or managed by an engineer. So straight away they are letting you know that everything around you, everything that's happening, has got an engineer involved in that process somewhere. The next thing, you will find engineers working on advanced prosthetics, creating new materials, investigating engine efficiency and alternative fuels, constructing bridges or developing clean water systems. So again, all those things around you, alternative, alternative energy sources, you know, wind farms, solar farms, wave farms, all things that are interesting to the environment now are all being designed and assisted by engineers. And lastly, from satellites to cell membranes, engineers use maths and science to achieve extraordinary things and find solutions to some of the world's most complex challenges. So I think the University of Bath have encapsulated there really rather well uh, everything that an engineer or engineers can do uh, in the world today, uh, in the past, and actually what is probably more important, uh, moving forward and looking forward to the future. That is what engineers do. They create what the world has never been, so what the world has never seen. So scientists study the world as it is, but engineers create the world that has never been. 
So again, I think that also encapsulates very nicely what are the difference between studying the pure purity of science, i.e. going to study physics or chemistry or biology, um, against an engineer who will have studied those subjects, but then uses that knowledge to create things that have never been created before, or to improve those things that have already been created, always making improvements. Them. So it's all about the advancement of technology. So why would you consider to study engineering? Well, I hope the reason you're listening to this uh, brief masterclass is, is that the fact you are interested in studying engineering. Uh, and the reason being that it's all around us. Everything you do um, around you today uh, involves engineering. You're all sitting now on your telephones, or your iPads or your laptops. They were designed by engineers. Uh, everything inside them has got engineering. The communication that we're doing now all comes through uh, the wonders of communication. I think someone's just got their microphone on if you'd like to switch it up. Whoever's just joined us, thank you. Um, it's fun. I mean, for my, you know, for my time uh, in, I said, when I was in the army and then when I was studying universe, a university and when I was teaching sort of engineering technology at schools, um, it's been hugely uh, 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 fun. And I, I've loved every moment of it. It's been really good to involve young people in designing some really, really fun things. And some of the projects that my students uh, produced over many, many years, some of them were quite astounding. Uh, the advancement of their of their technology, uh, technological um, ability uh, to produce these wonderful, wonderful things uh, and then go on to study engineer, engineering at university and beyond. It's interesting. Um, it's innovative. So everything you do is about innovation. Um, it's also about doing things called reverse engineering. So often the only way to learn something uh, about how something works is actually to take it to pieces. So I'm, I remember as a young lad myself, I mean, I used to take things to pieces all the time. Um, you know, take the lawnmower to pieces or um, I, I, I rebuilt a car when I was 18 because I wanted to find out how it worked. So I took it to pieces and then cleaned it all up and put it back together again. Um, now that, that's perhaps unusual, uh, but I would say if you're an engineer, you also need to know how things work. And so it's always good to do reverse engineering. It's also very creative. Uh, and later on, I will mention uh, things about creative arts, because I think also being an engineer, engineer often also involves a, a lot of creativity. And also the final thing is it's future proof. So what you are doing as an engineering uh, graduate or an engineer in the future is you are ensuring um, our future by designing and uh, creating uh, things that are going to help uh, people around the world uh, forever and a day. So an engineer is a dreamer. Yes, you will. I would often wake up uh, in the middle of night when I was teaching engineering, thinking of a solution to a sort of problem that one of my students had and how, how I could solve that with a very simple uh, engineering uh, idea. Um, so being an innovator, inventor, researcher, problem solver and creator. I think the last one is, is probably the key there. Uh, it, creating things that have never been created before. As I said, that's what technology is all about, creating something new. Um, and the final thing I said, that it's central to almost everything in the world. So everything around you, uh, there is probably, uh, I, I would perhaps towards the end of the of of our session, I'd ask many of you to perhaps come back to me with a with an answer to the question I'm going to solve. Is there anything actually around you now that is not the result of engineering? And I'd like you just to think about that as we go through uh, this presentation. And let's see if you can come up with any things that actually do not involve engineering. And let's see if I can if I can uh, disagree with you or agree with you. Let's hope we come up with some ideas. So the types of engineering now there's a, a whole plethora of um, 
uh, degree courses that you can go on to. Um, but these, I think, uh, are the key uh, engineering types. Um, and I've added in there uh, one that I that uh, I, I don't see very often, but I, towards the end of the list, space, because I think the uh, the, the space uh, program uh, across America, across Europe, uh, and in many many other countries, uh, is really starting to grow. Uh, and I think there will be far more degree courses that might specifically go towards some kind of space uh, orientation. But you see, there is a whole range there. Uh, and depending on which uh, area you want to go into might well depend on which courses uh, you are going to study at either A level uh, or IB or whatever course you study prior to taking on one of these engineering courses. The key, though, is to look at uh, the details uh, in the universities of each of these courses to make sure that you're studying the right subjects. So I can I can pause later on on some of these if you'd want to ask some questions on them. So what do you need to study? Well, I, I, I've, right at the beginning, I put maths, maths, and if in doubt, maths. Uh, I'm afraid the whole basis of much of what you do in engineering is about maths. Once you have a broad understanding of mathematical concepts, you are then able to apply those to many, many engineering problems. And so most universities, uh, and I, I know very, very few who wouldn't want maths as your key subject. The second subject that they often want is physics. It's not always physics. Sometimes they would want a third, a second subject, which could be chemistry or could be biology, depending on which area of, of, of um, engineering you're going to go in. But the majority will want maths and at least one science. Almost invariably, that is going to be physics. And then your third subject. Now, your third subject, as I mentioned before, uh, I think cr a creative art is extremely useful. Um, and the reason I put creative art is because if you did maths, physics and art as your three subjects, it could open also up the door maybe to go into architectural engineering or just straightforward architecture. Um, but I think as an engineer, if you go back to what I said earlier about being a creator, about a dreamer, about an innovator. I think that is something that you do get if you have the ability to also think in three dimensions. To be able to think in three dimensions also, it's very useful to have a, a creative art if you can as your third subject. But some of you, and me with particularly, are, are not artistic at all. Um, and I, I struggle to do just basic drawing sometimes. Uh, I can do uh, technical drawing when we're using rulers and set squares, but actually if it comes to anything sort of particularly creative, that's not really my forte. And so uh, doing adding a creative art to my mix uh, would have been quite difficult. But I did double maths, physics and chemistry, which tends to be um, the sort of the norm, as I said before. So, but if you wanted to go into chemical engineering or biomed engineering, chemistry is probably going to be one of the subjects you definitely need to do. It's a bit like if you're going to do medicine or veterinary science, probably the only subject that is critical to those is chemistry. Surprisingly, it's not biology, but it is chemistry. The third thing you might consider in that list as your third subject would be a language. Uh, now, it could be a variety of languages. So I did say, firstly, a foreign language, um, or it could be a computer language, like if you wanted to study computer science. And computer science, as you all know, is also studying a language, whether that be C sharp, C plus, uh, whether you're using Python or whatever that might be. Uh, and that is also a language. And then the other subject you could consider is further mathematics. And there is a debate around whether further mathematics is essential uh, into uh, someone who's taking up engineering at university. There is only one university that really does prefer mathematics and further mathematics, and that's Imperial College in London. And that is one of the top engineering universities in the whole world. They do prefer you to have further mathematics as your third um, subject. Um, but most universities do not. Uh, they, they say if you are taking it, that is absolutely fine. Uh, they'll recognise it, uh, but it is not essential. Um, when you go to university, 
uh, universities will bring you all up to the same level in terms of your mathematical ability uh, in their first term. So you'll find the first term of most university courses and do speak to admissions tutors, and I'm sure they will confirm this, um, but the most first terms tend to focus very much on mathematics to make sure that everybody is at the required level uh, to um, study that course. I remember my first time at university, the first problem that was given to us was a bridge going over um, a river. And we were asked to design that bridge with all the forces uh, uh, applied to it uh, to take um, a vehicle driving across it. OK, it sounds a relatively simple problem and we were given various materials to make it with. Um, and then we would test it. We had to test it to destruction to see how much weight it could take. Very interesting problem. And actually, the, the practicality of actually testing it at the end uh, was the most fun part of it to see whether your calculations had been correct. But all the calculations were mathematical calculations, trying to get um, a, uh, the right calculation so you knew how much material you should use. Because clearly you could build a bridge that was almost indestructible, but the, the sheer weight of that bridge, if you built it all out of concrete, could just form, uh, could mean that bridge would just collapse under its own weight. So you had all these things to consider. Um, but that's where engineering gets really quite fun. So in terms of universities, um, there are clearly some very, very good universities that uh, are highly sought after for engineering uh, degrees. The top of the list, uh, I think, has to be Imperial. Um, for many, many years, I've been looking at a, a whole variety of university courses, and there, there isn't really one that really tops Imperial, in my view. Um, second on that list is Southampton. Uh, they have really been up on the rise for many, many, many years in terms of their uh, the quality of their courses, but also the student feedback on their courses. So if you want, if someone says to me, what are my top two choices for engineering? I always say Imperial and Southampton. Now that, that's a personal view, but do look at those two. You see, I've got Oxbridge third. Uh, and the reason I've done that is because um, if you go and do uh, engineering at Cambridge, for example, you will literally spend the first two years doing mathematics. It's more like a mathematics degree. Uh, and they would be very, very keen on you having maths and further mathematics. So if you just like mathematics uh, and you want to have it slightly then going or engineered towards engineering uh, in its sort of the end of the second year and third year, then, yeah, Cambridge could be for you. Oxford is a little bit more practical, but again, they will focus almost entirely uh, at the beginning uh, on uh, mathematics. I remember going for uh, an interview at Oxford uh, for uh, an engineering degree uh, and every single question was mathematics. Um, so it wasn't about the practicalities. It was, do you understand maths? You then got um, the next five. They're all pretty much uh, equal in my view, but they are all very, very high quality uh, universities for engineering. So Warwick, Manchester, Edinburgh, Bristol and Bath. And for all those, um, uh, you know, they are going to have uh, a requirement for very, very good A-level grades. So Imperial almost entirely is going to be looking at A-star AA. Uh, but Bath and Bristol uh, will have some core engineering courses which will take ABB. So the requirements to go to good universities uh, with uh, to study engineering, you are going to have to get good A-level grades. And invariably, they'd like an A in mathematics to show you have that ability. There are other universities, and if you look at um, uh, UK, the UCAS website uh, or other sort of international uh, degree courses, they will tell you exactly what they require uh, on that uh, for the grades uh, to get into that course. Um, there is a real shortage of engineers. Uh, so actually, you can be quite bold uh, in your applications when it comes to looking at university courses. Uh, you'll probably find uh, Imperial won't budge. If they say A star AA, if you don't get A star AA, you won't get in. But the, the likes of um, Manchester, Edinburgh, Bristol and Bath, maybe not so much Edinburgh, but certainly Bristol and Bath, if they wanted three A's and you ended up with A, A, B or A, B, B, they might still take you. Um, all I would say is in this particularly, if you were applying this year, 
and you don't quite get your grades, phone up the admissions tutor, tell them how much you want to go on their course, tell them something about the course that you know about it. So you've done the research, tell them why it really interests you. And invariably, admissions tutor will say, OK, you've done your research. You obviously want to come on my course. OK, we'll take you, even though you haven't quite got those grades that we wanted. But as I said, the first term, they will bring you up to speed uh, anyway. So when you are choosing a uh, university, the first thing uh, I would say to every single student is you choose your first. First of all, you choose the course. Don't be tempted to say, I want to go to Imperial and then find the course that suits you. First of all, find the course that is right for you. So as I said, good research will pay great dividends because what you don't want to be in the position of is starting an engineering course and then realizing it's the wrong course for you. And then you having to try and change courses or drop out of that course then having to reapply. Much better to get the course right, first of all. Then you find the universities that run that course. And the, the list of courses I, I highlighted earlier, most universities will run most of those courses. So if you decide you want to do aeronautical engineering, you will find that most of the good universities will run that course. So then it comes down to, yeah, which is the, the course, the university that really appeals to you that you want to go and run that, uh, do that course at. Then you need to uh, ensure you have a wide choice of universities on your application if you're doing a UCAS application. Um, you clearly would like an aspirational choice. So that could be Oxbridge, it could be Imperial, it could be Warwick, it could be Southampton. Um, then two perhaps slightly more sensible choices, uh, Bath or Bristol uh, as an example, and then two backup choices that could be Surrey or um, Exeter or something like that. I'm not, I'm not sort of degrading those universities at all, but what I'm trying to say to you is don't choose five universities that all want AAA, because if you don't get AAA, you won't get any of those courses. Have a range of courses, so have uh, your aspirational choice that could be the A star AA or the AAA choice. And on the backup choices, perhaps have a couple of universities that are looking for BBB or something like that. So you can have your firm choice as your aspirational and maybe one of your backup choices uh, as your insurance offer. And I, I then sort of put there attend open days and I put in brackets virtual because at the moment, uh, obviously, there are no formal open days happening, but there are lots of virtual open days coming up on the market as we speak. I mean, only yesterday I was emailed by two universities uh, giving me dates for their virtual open days and encouraging students to take part. Um, it's a bit like what we're doing now, uh, having a virtual presentation uh, and uh, or a virtual uh, any virtual open day. So I'd certainly recommend that you attend some of those to get a good idea of what's going on and then call the admissions tutors to have a chat with them at first hand. So as you move forward, if you are currently in the lower six or equivalent and you're thinking about engineering, uh, probably the one thing that's on your mind or should be on your mind now is the writing of your personal statement. This is crucial because admissions tutors want to know something about you. They want something which is personal. So that's the first thing. It must be about you. Don't be tempted to just plagiarise or copy somebody else's personal statement because it won't be about you. Do something in it that makes, makes the admissions tutor read it and think, ah, I'm getting to know this person. If you've got a good personal statement, Admission tutors will make you an offer. As I said, engineers, engineers are in short supply currently. There are plenty of university places, but make something, <coughs> excuse me, make something, your personal statement, in such a way <coughs> that admission tutors are really going to sit up and note and say, I want you because you are a very, very good student. How can you embellish your personal statement? Well, the first thing is to read articles on engineering. 
So look at articles in the newspapers, uh, read sort of new scientists, uh, look at engineering magazines, find something which is topical uh, and in the press that you might be interested in. And you could also add that into your personal statement if it's something you're interested in. Make sure you focus your personal statement on maths and science. It's great if you are a, a brilliant sports person or a brilliant musician. That's fantastic and well done for being able to do that. But actually, if you're going to apply for an engineering course, they want to know that you're going to be good at maths and science. And I said I can't stress more, more um, the importance of mathematics. So tell them something about your ability at mathematics because they want to know that. Demonstrate also that you've read the course content. Now, clearly, if you're applying for a, uh, a degree in biomedical engineering, there is no point then talking about your love of aircraft uh, because that is not necessarily relevant to that particular course. Likewise, if you're going to go for aeronautical engineering, there's no point telling them about your love of biology. So make sure that the course you are applying for is uh, your content, your personal statement is relevant to that particular course. <clears throat> you need to demonstrate you've got an inquiring mind. So what have you done to show something, somebody that you are really keen about engineering? So that's why I talked about reverse engineering. So perhaps demonstrate that you you've taken something to pieces, you've looked and see how it worked and then you've put it back together again or you've found some idea of how you might improve it. So you're inquiring about how something works. You need to demonstrate your understanding of engineering innovation. So innovation is a good word to use. Include any relevant work experience. Um, work experience I know is difficult to come by because uh, a lot of companies now don't want to take uh, placements for work experience unless you're over 18. And I know that can be quite difficult. And currently in, the, in, in this climate, uh, you will not find any uh, work experience, but you could do online work experience. So certainly contacting some engineering companies, finding out something about them, perhaps doing some research for them. Uh, engineering companies would all like someone to do a bit of research for them. That would be demonstrating good work experience along as long as with an engineering company. And a brief mention of that would be very, very good. Uh, there are some courses called Head Start and they run at some of the very good universities. Now, sadly, I, I don't think any of them are running over this particular summer, which is which is a great sadness to everybody. But if you did hear about a Head Start course running at one of the universities, such as Southampton or Bristol or Bath, which are, have been some very common ones, uh, do try and book on those because it's about a four or five day course. You live in the university accommodation, you do a project, uh, building a vehicle or building a solar solar panel or something like that. Uh, and uh, the students who I know who've been on those courses before have found them incredibly interesting and have found that they have been able to select their course and their university far more easily having attended those courses. And then also add anything, anything practical you've done. And I said anything you've built or anything you've reverse engineered. The final thing I'd say about your personal statement is for every single statement you make in that personal statement, ask yourself that question, so what? Because if you can, you should be able to ask that question about three times and then get to the end point where there is no further answer. The reason being is if you've done that yourself, that's what your admission student is going to ask. So if you make some grand statement about what you've done, uh, I attended a Head Start course. Well, the admission is going to say, so what? I attended a Head Start course where I really engaged and indulged in um, all aspects of engineering. OK, so what will say the admissions tutor? If you then go into what specific type of engineering you looked at and what you specifically did, that's where it gets interesting to the admissions tutor. So I've just got a, a personal statement example here, and we have many, many more. Uh, and we'd be very happy to share some of our um, personal statements with you if that was of interest to any of you. But I think if you just look at this particular one, um, straight away, uh, the first few lines 
demonstrate here we have an inquiring mind digging into the operation system kernel i was able to see thousands of lines of code i mean there we have someone who is inquisitive who's getting straight away to the nub of what he wants to do which he wants to study electronic engineering he then he was talking about uh, a microprocessor then a project he did with guidance from his tutor um uh, that was me at the time uh started to learn about electronics uh, and then he did a, a project uh, where he did an, an an led cube controlled by an arduino a uh, little microprocessor I mean, that is an amazing project to do using um, an Arduino or using uh, a, um, a pickaxe or some other type of microprocessor that you might use uh, to program some simple thing to demonstrate you have an understanding of electronics uh, and uh, basic programming. So he then described what he was trying to do. Uh, it was a, a microphone circuit linked to an operational amplifier. Operational amplifiers are advanced uh, um, uh, electronics that you would use it, it, it in an A-level course on electronics, uh, but you'd certainly use them in the first year of universities. And he's demonstrated his knowledge that it was in the inverting mode uh, and how it increased uh, the voltage uh, and was read by the Arduino. Uh, and then he sort of added another thing, which is, again, quite technical, uh, putting a decoupling capacitor to eliminate voltage spiking. Great stuff. Really shows he understands the element of what he's trying to do and the, uh, and the detail. Um, and they say he found this stimulating and enjoying. So and then the final part of his personal statement. Uh, again, he talks about uh, that project. Uh, he says A levels have then provided me with the knowledge of broad my experience and skill. I chose maths and further maths for the purpose of training my logical thinking and using it as a tool for calculation in the field of engineering. So he's demonstrating his love of mathematics. Um, he's then going a little bit more into uh, radio transmitters, receivers, household applications, uh, infrared uh, devices. Uh, Ohm's law. So again, he's describing a lot of things to do with maths and science to show he has an understanding of it. And finally, uh, at the end, uh, he's talking about what happens when he goes home, the fact that he enjoys motorcycles. And I think, again, that gives you the uh, impression that here we have a young man who is very, very keen on engineering and is demonstrating through his personal statement his love of engineering. And, you know, if you as a mission shooter to read this straight away you would like this young man and they did like him and he uh, is still currently at imperial college studying um, electronic engineering and he's doing extremely well and is online to get a first uh, at the end of this year i mentioned early work experience um it's not essential but it's useful and if you've done it you should really mention something in your personal statement <clears throat> but the one i've just shown you that yeah your man didn't have any work experience but his experience was uh, founded in the fact that he did the work himself um i mentioned earlier work in any type of engineering company i mean even a company that makes uh, tin cans or a company that um is selling electronic devices they are electronics or they are engineering companies go and do some online work with them and you'd be fine. But it could be that for some of you, you want to do a degree that has uh, a year out uh, in um, a company. And again, I would thoroughly recommend that uh, because if you can get to a, um, a degree course like that, um, it means that uh, you'll be working for a, a proper engineering company in your third year. If you do well, uh, which the vast majority of people do well, uh, they are likely to offer you a job uh, at the end of your fourth year. Um, so if you want a straight line into employment at the end of your degree course, go and do a course that's got a third year in industry. I would recommend um, the getting into uh, engineering courses guide. Uh, and uh, there's the old, um, there's the booklet as well. Uh, it is a it's a great, great booklet written by 
uh, MPW staff uh, and written over many, many, many years uh, to make sure there's a lot of good stuff there. There's a lot of examples in there of personal statements, a lot of uh, uh, personal uh, extras that come from uh, existing engineering students, from admissions tutors at a variety of engineering uh, uh, courses. Uh, and so I would certainly recommend uh, the getting into guide. Uh, and if any of you'd like a copy, I'm sure we can arrange for that to be sent to you. So um, there we go. Uh, that's sort of just over half an hour of presentation from me. Um, I, I'm very happy to take um, any questions any of you might have. Thank you very much, John, for that. Um, we'll just wait a couple of minutes to see if there are any questions. I mean, there might be some, John, as we have you here, there might be some um, general questions regarding MPW London and, mm -hmm. um, and you know, how everything is going at the moment. Let's Absolutely. just wait and see. And, and that floor is open to everybody. So if you did have any questions about MPW, um, please do ask John. Could I ask uh, the audience a question then? I did pose a question at the beginning, uh, which is that, is there anything around you that they think does not involve uh, engineering? Did anybody uh, think of something they could uh, they could let me know uh, that is around them that does not involve engineering? Anybody got any ideas? <laughs> yeah. Who's that? I think everybody's shy today. Tatiana, so you've just uh, you just uh, come up. You come and ask the question. Yes, go for it. Hi, uh, it's Tatiana, and actually, uh, I, I have two purposes for raising my hand. First is um, to answer your question. I thought that uh, maybe sort of digging uh, deeper that. Our, um, it, it's something to do with psychology, uh, our internal world and our visions. Yes, they are sort of linked, but they are not dependent on engineering, in my opinion. What do you think? Oh, okay, so something which is ingrained in yourself is not involved in yes. engineering. Okay, that's, yes. that's our, yeah, like, you're, you're probably our right. But, but I can say that your, uh, anything you do could be influenced by engineering. So you can watch your television, you were influenced mm -hmm. by what is said on a television or listening to a radio or reading a book and all those things are uh, are have engineering in them. So I would say that some of your psyche uh, that you have yourself actually is influenced by some of the things that you have looked at or read or seen, which are all impacted by engineering. Agreed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I thought when I was uh, answering this question, I also thought that possibly uh, there, there is a link that like you use your like um, thoughts and beliefs uh, in the engineering process, even like when you are there, whatever um, could be imagined could be created in this form or another. Yes. And also, thanks and a lot. You, you sound a bit like a philosopher, so also, so maybe... <laughs> Uh, you can use actually philosophy and engineering as well. So it's 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 a good thing. <laughs> Thank you. And also, Betty, I just wanted to tell you that uh, when I try to put something in the comments, uh, I get a message that chat and the channel meetings is only available to team members. Oh, OK. Thank you for Thank letting you. me know. <laughs> OK, I will have a look at that in the settings for next time. I don't know. I think because MS Teams has... Um, changed i think there is a issue with it so i will i will check is anybody else having the same issue if so please raise your hand thank you for the presentation by the way it was really really useful thank you thank you tatiana it's very very kind of you to say so um have you got any questions other questions about engineering about mpw in general uh well maybe not at the moment you did mention uh, that you could provide some um examples of personal statements yes that would be most helpful to have a look at you know just to set your mind in the right frame um, when working on the personal statement 
Yeah, certainly the, the getting into engineering courses guide that I mentioned that is an MPW production has got uh, a whole host of excellent um, personal statements in it. So certainly uh, I'm sure if you leave your details uh, with one of the team, uh, we'll be able to get a copy to you. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Um, can I ask, um, using the situation that nobody else yet uh, has risen their hand, uh, you mentioned that you provide um, mentorship to the students. Uh, how is the process set? Do you start it from the beginning of their A level course? How many hours is dedicated? Are there, you know, dedicated meetings with the mentor, like weekly, bi-weekly? So within MPW, yes, uh, we will be uh, mentoring students throughout. We, every student is assigned to a director of studies. Director of study look after uh, around about 30 to 40 students, but have very, very uh, small teaching commitments. They're all qualified teachers, but they have gone down the pastoral route, uh, but they are university experts. So they will be seeing their students sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes uh, on a weekly basis, depending on the student, but they will guide uh, them through this process over either one or two years. Most students join us for two years, uh, but even those students join us for one year, will guide them through this university process to make sure that they are uh, applying for exactly the right courses and that they have uh, the right qualifications for that particular course. Um, my directors of study uh, do have a lot of contacts with universities uh, and with specifically with um, admissions tutors. So they're very, very happy to guide and mentor their students. Thank you. And is it uh, with engineering uh, courses being quite challenging and um, like high expectations from the students, uh, do you think uh, it's possible to apply for an engineering course after one year uh, A-level? Or yeah, it depends on the, back, on the background, but you're, you're right, yes. I mean, uh, do you mean after one year of a two-year two, two year course or just if, if you're doing just a one-year course? Yes, yeah, my question was uh, after one-year level or uh, two-year levels. Um, I understand yeah, that two-year uh, levels do, do provide. Yeah, so clearly, if you're on a two-year A-level course, uh, by the end of your first year, if you've been studying maths and physics and one other subject, uh, you will have a very good idea, of, I think, by then whether engineering is for you. And then we will obviously help and support that application process uh, and give give that student advice, uh, uh, as much advice as they need to get them on the right course. If you're coming to us for one year, <clears throat> we obviously need to know something about you before you arrive as well, because the application process for university and during the UCAS system uh, applications have to be done, yes, by later date, by the 15th of January, as uh, so that's about three, four months after the students start with us. But we'd like to get most of our applications done by the end of November so that students have got offers for university before Christmas. And actually, that's quite a nice thing to get because then it gives those students a bit of momentum and impetus for the new year to really encourage them to, to, uh, to, to really engage with their subjects. Uh, and get the grades that they need. But students who come to us for their one year courses, they tend to have already done two years of A-levels somewhere before, or even have done at least one year of A-levels before. So we, we normally would have a fairly good idea of their background uh, when they join us and give them the relevant advice. The key thing I'd say though always is the ability at mathematics. Um, unless you've got uh, a good ability in mathematics, you're not going to be surviving uh, an engineering course. Uh, our minimum requirement of, for a student doing mathematics at MPW uh, is that they have a minimum of a grade seven or equivalent at GCSE. Uh, if you don't have a seven or equivalent at GCSE, you're not going to cope with the A-level mathematics course. Uh, and we can show that statistically over many, many years where we have occasionally taken a student who's not got a seven and then has got a very poor grade at A-level mathematics. So the key thing is to be, be good at mathematics. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thanks, Tatiana. Thank, very, very nice thank you, John. Thank you, for your, thank you for, your, um, for your comments. That's very, very helpful. We do have a question. Um, and the question is from IEC and um, 
we have, do you think that work experience for A-level students is important? And if some students don't have a um, chance to do some work experience, are they less advantaged? OK, um, I think if you can do some work experience, it's not going to do you any harm whatsoever. Um, I think all experience is a good experience. Even if you go and do some work experience, let's say you go and work for a electronics, electronics company or you do some online electronics uh, work with the company and you don't like it. Actually, that's a positive experience because you've decided I don't like electronics. You might then decide you want to go down a more mechanical route or a civil engineering route or something completely different. Um, you will not be disadvantaged at all by not doing work experience. Uh, not everybody can do work experience, so it would be wrong to for someone to be disadvantaged. But if you haven't got work experience, what you I said you do need to do is to demonstrate your love of maths and science and why an engineering degree is for you. Uh, and you can do all that without having done work experience. But I think the way to get around that is by doing further reading. So doing background reading, background research, uh, into uh, engineering courses, engineering issues, engineering problems, reading good quality uh, uh, books, and magazines, uh, watching online lectures, uh, all that type of thing. There's there's a mass of material on sort of even on YouTube uh, to do with engineering. As long as you've demonstrated you've got that interest and that ability, uh, you, you you can actually apply quite happily uh, and get a on a course without having work experience. I mean, when I did my uh, degree course, and I know it was a long, long time ago, I didn't have any experience. I didn't work for an engineering company. I'd work for a, uh, actually I worked for a book company uh, for about six months in my gap year. Uh, but I, I didn't have any engineering experience at all, but I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, and I demonstrated that in my personal statement. Okay, that Great, thank you. We don't seem to have any other questions, but we will wait. OK, I think I think that's it, John. Thank you very much, John, for your time this morning. My pleasure. My pleasure. Well, it's been very, very good to uh, to, to to chat with so many of you. Um, uh, and, and I said, if there's any other information that you'd like um, about engineering or about MPW or about any of the courses we run, uh, then uh, the team would be very, very happy to take uh, any uh, any questions you have following uh, this webinar. Yes, absolutely. So um, this webinar has been recorded and we will send it to you later today uh, together with the presentation. Please, if you do have questions, feel free to email international at mpw.ac.uk. Thank you all very much for joining us this morning and please stay safe and we hope to see you soon. Thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, and I've just had a Thanks message everyone. from uh, NGOC. So thank you very much indeed for your for your uh, comment as well. It'd be very nice to meet you all and uh, have a, a, a lovely day. And please all stay safe and stay well. Um, it, it's a, a difficult time for all of us, but uh, please stay healthy uh, and enjoy life as much as you can. Thank you, John. Bye, everybody. See you, everybody. Bye for now.